So it's Sunday. I'm feeling energetic. And so the plan is today is to make a radiator cowling mount for my for my GoPro. I really think the mounting position adds a great perspective to your to your riding, to your trips. Um, so here's just some some small samples of the footage I've just taken on the on the Sunday. You'll notice here that there's no specialist tools used to build the uh, GoPro mount. Uh, and also you'll probably notice that um, I've just found some old bits and bobs lying around the garage with the exception of the tape. That's the only thing that I've bought for this project. The first step in the process here is to apply the 3M tape to the uh, GoPro mount to give the adhesive a little bit of time to stick. What you'll notice here is I'm not actually using the official GoPro 3M tape. Now on the website here, on the GoPro website, it says the part is the 2.5 millimeter double-sided tape and the 3M part number is 3M4991VHB. As I didn't have access to the uh, official GoPro product, uh, I did a bit of searching around on YouTube and there was another video out there and it mentioned that you can also use the Scotch Permanent Outdoor Mounting Tape, which I believe is product 3M4011. Now on the Bunnings, the Australian Bunnings website here, it says it's also VHB, so I believe that's very high bond. Unfortunately, the outdoor mounting tape isn't quite wide enough to fit all around the mount, so you have to put it on its side and um, stick two, two halves together, as you'll see. I'm sure this isn't going to provide as good a bond as the Model 4991, but uh, look, I've taken the bike out a couple of times now. Um, I've got it up to um, 110 k's an hour. It's been fine. I, I just make sure that I, I tether the GoPro to another part of the bike. Um, but yeah, so far after two or three rides, it, it's been great. What I'm doing here is cutting the edges off an old, I think it was like a 1996 Nokia mobile mount for the car. Because uh, what, what I want to do is actually, well, I need to attach the go or stick the GoPro mount to to something else and the reason I need to do that is that other thing that I'm attaching it to I am then going to screw it to an old IKEA bracket it's a little bit of a complicated approach but as I said I'm just using what I've got in the garage here's how I want the GoPro mount to sit on the piece of plastic that I've just cut underneath the GoPro mount will be a hole for a nut and bolt and as you can see there's another bolt resting on there and that's where I'm going to drill another hole. So go ahead and drill your first hole for the first nut and bolt. I've temporarily added the bracket here um, as a guide for drilling the pilot hole for the other uh, nut and bolt. Now just drill all the way through. I countersunk each of the holes that I drilled earlier so that when I put the bolts in, they're nice and flush with the plastic. I thought I was being smart here and adding super glue to the um, countersunk holes that I've just drilled so that when I attach the, the nuts and uh, the bolts, they were going to be really, really stuck and it was going to be a really, really, join, really good join, which it is. It's, it's joined really well, but it did become a little bit messy later on when I had to um, file down some of the leftover glue. So in hindsight, I don't think I really needed to apply the glue. Has it made the nut and bolt stick better? Yep, sure it has, but I don't think it's a necessity to do. I'm filling up the gaps in the countersunk holes here with super glue, just so it gives a little bit more surface area for the GoPro mount to adhere to. And then, yeah, as I mentioned before, I then needed to file down and just sand down 
the excess glue so so there wasn't any jaggedy edges after giving everything a really really good clean take off the backing tape um, from the gopro mount and then stick it to the base that you've just made and just to make things look a little bit more prettier i decided to trim off the excess bits of plastic base Obviously you don't have to do that, but I thought, yep, it's going to look a little bit better and I suppose provide less wind resistance. Now let's go ahead and attach the, the base that we've just created to our old IKEA hinge, our old IKEA bracket. On the other side of the bracket, I am screwing um, two nuts. It's the, the first, well, uh, I'm a bit concerned that when, when uh, we're on the bike, there's going to be vibration, so rather than just the, the one nut, I'm going to have two nuts on there. And again, just to make things look a little bit more pretty and perhaps a little bit safer and also to cut down on uh, wind drag, I'm going to remove the excess thread. And now it's just a simple case of attaching all the nuts and the bolts and the, um, the washers all together in preparation for attaching to the bike. Using an Allen key, unscrew the bolt that is attached to the radiator cowl. Quite slowly, screw in the new mount that you've created into the radiator cowl uh, nut entry point. Um, again, like I said, be, be slow, be careful because the radiator is on the other side. So after you've screwed it in, as soon as you feel a little bit of um, uh, pressure, wind it back a little bit just so that you're not pushing onto the radiator at all then it's simply a matter of tightening up the two nuts that you've got on there uh, up nice and tight against the washers so that you you have got a nice firm connection to the bike you're obviously not screwing in the uh, bolts any further so it's not going further into the radiator, the bolt's staying still. You're just tightening up the nuts, so they're applying pressure to the um, to the washers against the radiator cowl, so that provides that, that nice little bond, that nice little seal there, so that your your mount isn't gonna twist around when you're when you're riding. What I think is really good about this mount is that it's quite camouflaged, so it doesn't stick out. Like one of the uh, things I was a little bit concerned about when I was riding around with it uh, stuck to my helmet is you, you do kind of look a bit like a doofus. And also, you know, when you're doing over 100 k's an hour, it really kind of pulls your, your helmet back a lot. Uh, with this position, I think you get such a good aspect. It's really good seeing the uh, suspension going up and down. It doesn't put any pressure on your head. All good.